In this second lesson about LibreCAD, we're gonna start to work with some basic commands. We're gonna familiarize with the interface a little bit more. And so we're gonna increase the level of uh, difficulty from video to video. Uh, we're gonna start from really beginners to more like medium intermediate or like a little bit more professional and expert at the end. So let's start here with the welcome screen that we find every time we, we reset the interface. We saw this, how to do this in the in the previous video, so that we can every time reset everything if we think we did something wrong or if it's something's not looking right. So the first thing we can do here is actually define the units. So this is a really important parameter, but you can also change this later. But it's really important that you start with some hint about the size of your project. So if you do like an interior, you could use centimeters or like architecture. If you want to do a project in like a landscape design or a urban scape, you can use kilometers or meters or whatever. So in this case, I'm gonna choose centimeters. Now by default, you will find millimeters also in other CAD and BIM applications. But this time I'm gonna use centimeters and leave the language in English. And this is our default interface again. So we can start to move on from the previous video. Now, the I think that the most important things to know at first is the selection commands. So how to select, how to navigate, so navigation, and also how you can start to draw with really basic commands. So how to insert commands and manage a little bit the initial settings and preferences. Now, let's see real quick navigation. This is like the basic commands for navigations, which are the pan. So if you press the scroll wheel or middle mouse button, you, you can do the pan or panoramic, move horizontally and vertically. And if you scroll the scroll wheel, you can do a zoom. And well, that's pretty much it. Now this is like the two basic navigation commands, but they are really helpful. So try to memorize the middle mouse. Now you will also get hints and messages down here suggesting you how to use a particular or a specific part of the command and so on. So always give a look here and also in the command line, which by default is right here on the right, it's going to give you some messages and hints again and tips how to use the commands that you are uh, selecting. So uh, let's move on. So this is the navigation. Now let's start to create something in order to see also the selection and other creation commands. So we saw that we can create a line using the toolbar here, or we can type just the command inside the, the command line. So let's do both. So I'm gonna start with the simplest thing, which is gonna go in the toolbar here, select two points, and then I'm just gonna click with the left mouse this time. I'm gonna create the first point, which is the first vertex. Now, when we do, drawings here in LibreCAD we're actually creating vector graphics. So this is the first vertex and if I click here again with the left mouse this is going to be the second vertex. So I have two vertices which means that I have a vector. The vector is the line which is between one vertex and the other. So between two vertices. Now if you click, if you press ESC first of all you can exit any command so when you are out of the command, the, the default command is selection. So if you click on an object with the left mouse, it's gonna select it. And if you press ask, it's gonna deselect it. And then we have also other selection commands, but we're gonna see those later as well as other navigation commands. We're just gonna stick to the basic, to the beginner things. So when you select a line like this or a vector, if you go down here, you have some information. So this is why it's useful to hold, always have a look down here. You can see it's telling me that I have, well, it just disappeared because it was auto-saving. That's another important feature. I'm gonna show you that also. But you can see here, it's telling me that I have selected one uh, uh, segment or one line or one element, or you can call it however you want. And it's also giving me the measure. This is the length of these line right here and since I have decided to work in centimeters this is kind of 10 meters long or the length is 10 meters. 
So I can always measure what I do. And this is also an information about the grid. So when you zoom, the grid will generate and regenerate all over. The more you zoom, the more it's going to get smaller and smaller. So you can work in many different situations here just by, it's going to auto adjust. And okay, let's proceed here with the right mouse. Now, right mouse is going to get the latest command that, that you use. So in this case, it's my two points line. So if I click, I can continue to create other lines. Now, you can see that if you continue to click, you can continue to add other points. And if you want, you can also close the shape. You can leave the open shape or you can close it anytime. So let me go back now. If I press Ctrl Z, you can see I can go back. And if I press Ctrl Epsilon, I can move forward. Now you can find these commands also here at the top. This is undo and redo. So let me just undo everything. So it's a way to delete as well. Because if I start to draw now again, everything that will be like in the future uh, is not going to be there anymore. So I'm just going to have a single line. So you can see here, if I go back, nothing. If I go forward, I'm just going to have this line. So if you go back and then create anything else, it's going to delete everything is going to come after. And this one here, you can see now it's 383, so it's, it's about four meters long, but this is, remember that your units are in centimeters. You can change it anytime, but right now they are in centimeter. So when I start to create the line, well, let me just create it down here in the comma line this time. So I'm gonna type line, press enter, and now I can continue to draw. So if I click two times, I'm gonna create one vector, or one segments, and if I click here a third time, I'm gonna have two connected lines. And now I can already close the shape because I can, the, the, the basic shape is gonna be the triangle. So you, this is like the, the 2D, the, the simplest 2D shape that you can create just with three lines. So I can already close, you can see here, it's gonna give you some suggestions. It's, it's telling you if you want to specify the next point or if you wanna close or undo, so go back. So what do you wanna do now? If you wanna go back, you can just type undo and press enter and you can see now I am back to the previous point. So I didn't leave the drawing of this shape, but I'm still in the shape, but uh, I, I went back one step. Now, if you press ask, you're gonna exit the command and you're gonna need to start all over or from there, but you need the snap. But right now I don't want to put too many things on the table. I don't wanna talk about snaps. So let's ju just go back here and restart this triangle. So I'm gonna use the line, type line, press enter, and then specify first point, specify next point, specify next point, and now let's close. So. Before we went back with undo, now we will close. So we will type close and press enter, and this will create our closed shape. So you can create open lines, open shapes. You can create also closed shapes. So this is a 2D shape. Well, actually also the line is 2D and only the point or the vertex is one dimension, 1D. So now let's see something more about selection. So if you click with the left mouse, we saw that you can select. If you continue to click, you can continue to select more lines like this. And if you want to deselect, you can hold the shift key and just deselect what you want, what you don't want anymore. Or if you just press ask again, you can exit the selection and just start to the default state. If we click and drag with the left mouse, you're gonna see this blue, if you move to left, from left to right, you're gonna see this blue window. And if you move from right to left, it's gonna become green. So you have these two types of selections. This is exactly like in AutoCAD. So the blue window is gonna select everything that it's gonna be completely inside. So you can see now I have selected only this line. Let's see that if I wanna select only this triangle, 
you can see now only the triangle is inside the blue rectangle, so it's going to be selected at once. Now, if you go the other way, so if you click and drag from right to left and create this green window, this is going to select everything that it will be intersected, so everything that it will be touched by this rectangle will be selected. So these are called window and crossing methods. So everything that will be crossed by this is going to be selected. Everything is going to be in included in this blue one is going to be selected. So these are two like more, just a little bit more advanced selections than the simple left mouse click. So we saw that everything is accessible in the left, uh, in the mouse. So left mouse will select. And also you can click once you select it and drag with the left mouse and this is going to move. So this is another really basic operations, basic transformation. Click and move and press ask when you're finished. So um, if you want to delete, press cancel or delete key or the backspace also the key will work to delete. And Ctrl Z, Ctrl Epsilon to move back and forth again. Now the the middle mouse will help you to navigate. The right mouse just select the latest um, command. So let's move forward. Let's create something more specific. I want to create like a room. So I want to use the units. I want to be precise. Use the commands. Use the Cartesian field, the X axis, the epsilon axis, and so on. So I want to be just a little bit more advanced, a little bit more precise. So the first thing I would do, I probably go to the options and check the units again, or double check. So I can go to options, application preferences, and well, these are like uh, um, preferences for the uh, cursor, but we're going to come back to this later. And if I go to defaults, this is where you can change the unit. So you can switch from centimeters to meters to whatever. So let's say that I want to use meters because it's going to be like simpler for me to create an apartment. But now let's go back here. So this one here, which it was before almost four meters, now it's almost 400 meters because when you change here, the units, the, the drawing isn't going to rescale, resize, it's going to stay the same. So this is this will be the same length, but this time these are meters, not centimeters. So let me go back here and leave meters. Now another thing you can do right away here is to define the auto backup if you want it, the auto save and the interval. So the time that you want to so this time is um, every five minutes you can save or you can change this. You can bring it down or bring it up depending on your preferences. So let's leave everything else as it is at the moment. We're gonna, we're gonna come back here when it's when it will be needed. So let's start to work with. Um, I'm gonna just delete this and start to work with the line. Okay. So if I want to start from the origin of my Cartesian field, which is 0x and 0 epsilon, I just type here, you can say that when I, you can see that when I select the two points, the first thing it's going to ask me is to specify the first point. So I can either click on the screen or I can just type the x and the epsilon. So in this case, it will be 0, comma, 0 and press enter. And you can see it just plays the, the first point there. Now let's specify the second point. So if I need to make a room, I can go now on, on the up direction, which is going to be epsilon. So I'm going to type 0 for the x again. And let's use the point right now. So 0 point, uh, let's do... Uh, 5 meters, so 0 0.5, and press enter. Now you can see that, that that didn't work. So didn't create anything. So you need to use the command. You can see it's, it's telling me that the command 0 0.5 is not recognized. So read every time. The information can be really helpful. So I'm going to type again 0, 5, and press enter. And now if I zoom, you can see I have created my 5 meter 
wall. Let's say that I am creating a, just a simple room. So this is a five meter wall. Now I want to create a four meter wall in this direction here to the right. So how to do that? Well, I need to specify the X first. So it's going to be four because it's going to be four meter and comma, let's say, uh, well, five because it's going to be straight. So these are like absolute coordinates. So it's absolute coordinate system. And you can see now this point is X4, Epsilon 5. And now I want to move down. So if I want to move down, I don't have to go negative. If I go negative, I will go in this other quadrant here. So this is positive, positive X Epsilon. This is uh, X positive Epsilon negative. This is X negative Epsilon negative, and this is X negative and Epsilon positive. So now I am in the positive positive zone, so nothing will be in the minus. So if I press here, for example, uh, let's say two meter on the X, well, actually, no, it's going to be four meter on the X, comma, two meters on the Epsilon. So you can see now I'm going here, I'm going down. And now I want to move here on the right again. So it's going to be like 6x, comma, 2 epsilon. And there you go. Now, if I want to go into minus epsilon, let's do like minus 2. So the, the x stays the same. So it's going to be 6 for the x, comma, minus 2 for the epsilon. So I'm going to go here now in this quadrant. And let's go now all the way here. So it's going to be minus 2 for the x, comma, minus 2 for the epsilon. And there you go. Now I am in this quadrant right here. And if I'm going to go now to the 0 epsilon to bring back the, the line here. So I'm going to go minus 2 for the x, ta uh, comma, 0. That's it. And now I will close everything up using the close feature or just type 0 comma 0 because I just came back here to the origin of my Cartesian field. So this is how you can work more precisely. You can create your first room or perhaps your first apartment, but we're going to see more. And essentially you can work like this or you can use the grid snap or you can snap to other objects, but we're going to talk about snaps later. So we saw some really basic features here, but if you have questions, you can write it in the comments. Also suggestions for other users. And I'm just going to finish here with this um, cursor. So if you create anything here, you can see that you have these like uh, yellow lines, like yellow dashed lines. This is one way you can use it. And you're going to have like a like an icon for the snaps, which is kind of a circle right now. But you can change that. You can go to the options, application preferences, appearance, and you can see you have other types of uh, indicator lines and uh, indicator shapes. So right now we are in crosshair circle, but let's do like the spider web and square. So let's do OK. And you need to exit the current command and restart. So right click, I'm going to get the latest command. And this is spider web. And you can see we have a square for the snaps instead of the original circle. So you can just go here and experiment with these. So this is going to be crosshair 2 and 1. So press ESC again and start all over. And so this is just a little bit different crosshair with just the point from the snaps. So you can little by little customize the preferences here. But again, I'm just going to use the basic and standard uh, settings because I don't want to confuse you throughout uh, the whole course. So I'm going to go back to Crosshair and Circle, which are by default. And this will be all for this second lesson. Again, I hope you enjoy it. And if you did, subscribe to the channel for more. Check in the channel for other video courses and video guys about CAD, about drawing and uh, vector graphics and so on. Just type in the search bar what you're looking for. You will probably find it. Otherwise, you can write in the comments for uh, questions, suggestions, ask for assistance and so on. Also, if you want to thank us, if you want to support us, please join the channel as a supporter. This will help us to create more videos, more video guides for you. So thanks for watching and see you in the next.